next thing we need to do is build our business logic layer. The business logic layer is essentially a wrapper around the data access layer. We're going to create some classes which calls the data access layer and typically return the typed data sets to the client. This allows very fast development of the logic layer, but again, we can also add methods quite easily to uh, do a bit of customization. We'll also use the component model attributes, such as data object and data method, to those classes, the data classes, and that means they will be able to show up inside our data binding mechanisms, inside our Windows and web applications. So let's take a look at now creating the business logic layer. So we ask for a new project, and this is going to be our class library. This is going to be our business logic layer. And essentially what you typically will do is you need to now create classes that map to your data access layer classes. So we're going to create a new class, and this is going to be our customer's business logic object. And we'd create also our orders business logic object. Okay, so we've now created our customer's uh, business logic class. And essentially what we need to do here is create various public methods. We should make this a public class. And we need to make public methods that retrieve those objects. To make this easier, we need to, well first we have to reference the actual DAO itself. So we're going to add a reference to the data access layer from the business logic layer. when it's ready. Project DAL OK. OK, so this is typically what we tend to do is reference the actual uh, main namespace and also the, the table adapters namespace as well. So we're going to have a public function that's going to return now our, in this case, customers, uh, customers table adapter. No, this is going to be the actual DAL dot. So it's the Northwind data set dot customers data table. So that's essentially what we're going to be returning. And we're going to call this get customers. So this is to return all of the customers. What you'll also typically do in these classes is create yourself a private data adapter for the main actual adapter. So this is the customer's table adapter and we'll call it as a variable adapter. And actually we'll just instantiate it immediately. So that's always ready to go. So now we say adapter dot get data. That is the method inside the business layer by default that gets us all of the information. We simply say return. So it's literally one line of code for this. And you would then go and check to see if there were any other methods that you had also created, for example, get count and get data by customer ID, and you would replicate this type of logic. So you might call this one get customer, and then you pass in the int, which is your cust ID, and then you would go and say get data by customer ID, and pass in the customer ID. This is actually a string, I got it wrong, so let's change that to a string. And that's it, and that now just returns all of or a customer information. Another one that we would probably do is have a public method that returns an integer, which is called get count. Okay, so let's just check that that actually compiles. Now, this is coming back, what's interesting is this comes back as a, uh, a, a nullable integer, which, so we should just make ours the same thing. We don't expect it to come back as a null, but we'll put it up as a, as a nullable integer as well. Or alternatively, because we know it will come back with some information, we could just convert this to the value, and that will actually give us back our, our integer now. So either sort of approach would be, would be acceptable. So we would at least do all of these items and then you would also go and create any updates because don't forget you've also got various update method, insert methods and so on but what we'll do is we'll wait till we get to the finish example because there's a lot of typing to get that to work. The orders one, we would do exactly the same sort of thing, we make this a public one and we're going to copy and paste the uh, the data access objects, the, the, the different namespaces into here 
and we're then going to go and create our public method that's going to return our northwind ds dot orders data table get orders we're going to have our private adapter and we're going to return our adapter dot get data once again we might then go and say uh, get orders for customer ID which is going to take a string cust ID and this one's going to be our get data for cust ID but it's still the same functionality we're, we're really just wrapping up the data access layer at the moment obviously when it comes to the updates and inserts that's when we can do our business logic now something else that's quite useful to do inside these classes is to use the component model namespace because then what we can do is mark the class as being a data object class. That will mean it will show up automatically in the list of the data binding methods. We can also then go into the individual methods themselves and make this a data object method. You can then specify the data object method type as being a select statement for this one. And we can even say that this is actually the default select statement which means that it will automatically show up as the main select statement for this class. We can do the same for this one here, but of course this would now not be the main select. And then inside here we could do something with the get count if you wanted to, but typically you don't data bind to the count method. You'd also then be able to do the same, as you can see later on, when we get to things like the insert and the update methods too. And we would do the same options just quickly to finish this up. Okay, we can now build this and make sure that it's all compiled and happy. So we've now built the basics of our business logic layer.